Fujifilm X-T5, 40 megapixel power, Sony A7R5, 60 megapixel power, Fujifilm GFX, Leica Q3, 60 megapixel power and lots of megapixels. You can cropping and cropping and you'll see that the image will not be ruined and with one lens you can have so many lenses. Let's talk why this is a mistake. Let's talk about this now. Hi there, Tudor Matescu here. In this video I want to share with you my experience with cropping big megapixel files from Sony R3 to Fujifilm X-T5 and also using crop modes on X100V, on X-T5, on Sony big sensors. And I want to share with you why is cropping for me, why I like it and why I don't like it and why you should buy a camera not based on cropping power depending on your job regarding photography. So if you are in content like this, please subscribe, subscribe now, hit the subscribe button and thank you very much for this. So first of all, let's talk about the advantages of a big megapixel sensor regarding image quality. So regarding image quality, we can divide image quality into parts, the good parts and the bad parts. So the good parts, you can crop in, okay. You will have a great image with lots of tones, deep colors, better transitions, lots of details and sharpness. So all will look great and dynamic range in general. But this comes with a cost. This comes with the cost of a low ISO. So if you want to use a big sensor, like a 40 megapixel sensor, or like a Leica Q3 sensor, or like a Sony R5 sensor, colored sensor, you will need to use a low ISO level to get that great image quality. The image quality, when you use a bigger ISO, depending on the camera and on the sensor generation and processor and so on, it will have lots of noise. On Sony 7R3, I wasn't satisfied at all with the marketing gimmick that a bigger file, if I will export it in a smaller file, will have lesser noise. It's not like this in reality. It's not like this. I had big problems getting rid of the noise. And here I feel that problem too at high ISO levels. I can get rid of it. But with a 24 megapixel sensor, it's a lot easier. It's more fun. It's more enjoyable. I can shoot at high ISO levels without problems. So a big sensor with lots of megapixels will get you some problems regarding noise at high ISO levels. Now we are getting to the next problem that no one is talking about, no one. And pay attention because it's very important. A bigger sensor, a sensor with lots of megapixels needs to have a good IBIS. And in general, the IBIS, it will be the same as on a sensor with 24 megapixels and so on. So the IBIS, because the sensor, it is so big regarding megapixels, will not give you those good results that you will get with an IBIS on a 24 megapixel sensor. So the IBIS will be under, for photography I'm referring especially, under a smaller sensor regarding megapixels. I'm not talking about size, full frame, micro four thirds and so on. So huge problem here and now comes the next problem that it's explaining why you need a better IBIS on a sensor with more megapixels. When you have more megapixels, you'll be forced and especially on a full frame camera, but also on this to use a higher shutter speed. You will need a higher shutter speed when you will zoom in at 100% to see that your subject hadn't motion blur from your hand. So let's take an example. You will need to use a 1 over 1000 shutter speed on a situation where on a 24 megapixel sensor or smaller, you will use a 1 over 500. So 2x time at least faster shutter speed. This means 2x time bigger ISO level or a better lens with an f1.4, f1.8 aperture. So faster shutter speed, bigger ISO and IBIS if you can get better IBIS, but no. So in general, you'll be penalized in shooting day to day 
with faster shutter speed and higher ISO levels. So the advantage that you get regarding image quality, it's very, very small. It's very small because you'll ruin the quality of the image with higher ISO levels, especially in low light. And I'm not talking about night photography. I'm talking just about low light indoor photography. So you'll have there a problem. You really need to use faster shutter speed. Every owner that has a camera with a bigger sensor knows this. Now let's talk about the AF. A sensor with lots of megapixels in general will be slower than a sensor with lesser megapixel. I have understand that this uh, also, it depends on the processor, but it doesn't matter for me. In real world, in practical world, we have cameras that have 40 megapixels, 60 megapixels, 48 megapixels, and their AF is way, way behind a camera with a sensor that has lesser megapixels. So you have AF problems, uh, and especially in low light. So again, you have lots of megapixels, but you must use this camera in very, very good light. Big problem here. This is why in general, studio photographers are using these cameras where they are controlling the light, they are controlling the environment, and they are capable to control everything. They are not cameras for the moment, I would say that you can shoot all day long as a hobbyist because we'll get to the next problems. The next problem, it's a PC problem. Let's say you are taking pictures, you are okay with them, but you need space, lots of, lots of space, and the space, it's the least problem. You need backup space, another problem. But the biggest problem is that you need power. You need power for computing the files for the catalog, if you are using Lightroom, but also for editing the files. You'll have huge, huge files. And when you want to edit 100 files, 300 files, you'll have big problems regarding power and speed of your computer. So buying a camera with 60 megapixel, 40 megapixel plus, you'll have problems regarding space, power, AF, ISO, and so on. What is the biggest advantage then? Why manufacturers are telling us that you can buy this camera like Leica Q3, like X100 V6 with 40 megapixel in the future camera, let's say, and you can crop in and with one lens, you'll have many lenses. Well, this is what I want to get. This is a lie and I'll tell you immediately why. But before, the cropping power, the 60 megapixel power, the 40 megapixel power, 48 and so on, is good in general for professionals that are printing that are printing files, big files, big images, and not for everyday shooters and not even for wedding photographers. Let's say you didn't make a composition very well, but 24, 33 megapixels is enough to crop in and to correct that picture. Why? Because in general, if you aren't a blind photographer, you'll not crop more than 10, 30% from your picture. And 10, 30% crop, it means that 24 megapixels, 12, 16 megapixels is sufficient. And printing is very forgiving. And also we have AI programs that will help us increase the resolution. In general, I would recommend a 40 megapixel sensor just for studio shooters, for fashion shooters, and for billboard shooters that they are really needing those huge sensors and they need that power for a specific need. But the companies market the 60 megapixel sensor or the big resolution sensors for amateurs and for hobbies photographers, like there's an advantage there. You can use the sports finder mode on a Fujifilm camera. You can use the APS-C mode on a Sony camera, or you can digitally zoom in. And yes, this could be an advantage, but I want to share with you why this is a disadvantage, a big disadvantage on a long term. So I've showed in a video how you can use the sports finder mode on Fujifilm X-T5 to get another lens from your dedicated lens. So from this 18mm f1.4, if I will use the sports finder mode, I will get an equivalent of a 35mm field of view. 
and from your 20mm f1.4, you'll get an equivalent of a 40mm field of view with an f1.4. But I've discovered using these crop modes on my Sony, on my X-T5 and on other cameras and also on my X100V that I'm not satisfied, even if I'm using an f1.4 lens, I'm not satisfied on the end result and of the using of the lens like I am satisfied with a dedicated lens. So yes, I'm more satisfied to use a dedicated lens, a 27 f f2 lens on X-T5 compared to a 20mm f1.4. I would love it more. Why? Because you have the focal lens compression. This is where the cropping power can't lie your eyes because you have some experience, I guess, if you are buying these expensive cameras with these big sensors and you'll be able to realize that no, no, the cropping of the lens will not mimic a 35mm lens, will not mimic a 40mm lens. So let's take the example of a Leica QC because I feel this is the best example. You have Leica QC, a 28mm lens that in reality it's a 24mm lens. I've made a video, check it here. So you take that 24mm lens that cropped, already cropped from the sensor, it's a 28 corrected field of view. Then you crop more in 35 mm field of view. Then you crop more in the 50 mm field of view. Any like a shooter and any person that has at least one year experience in photography and he used different lenses for different jobs, it will understand that the cropping, it will not mimic the focal lens. And even if the field of view, it's the same, even if you use a full frame camera and you will say, no, when I will enter in that crop mode, it will be in an APS-C equivalent lens. It's not the same. In my experience in shooting it, it's not the same. You can change the lens, but pressing one button and this will uh, make you change from the crop mode to the wider mode and so on. So we'll use a digital zoom in the end and this on the streets and when you are doing photography with your family and so on, it will start to bother you. You will not feel that you have a lens, a focal lens and you don't have a focal lens, you have just a cropping power. So by using and using that crop modes, you'll not be satisfied on the long term. If you are just buying a camera like this and if you are just using it, yes, it can help you and you can be a little uh, wowed about this option, but on the long term, you will feel that I really don't have here a 35 mm lens on my Leica Q3. I don't have a 50 mm lens. I don't have with this lens a 20 mm equivalent lens. You'll feel that it's a crop. You'll feel that it's a crop. So in the end, you'll regret that the sensor with lots of megapixels, it didn't satisfy your cropping needs, hoping that you can replace a lens by cropping. So the idea where I want to get is no, you can't replace a lens using crop modes, even if in theory and on paper you are there. But no, you aren't there. So even with Sony A7R III, I would not buy that camera for the cropping power. I would not buy it. I really do prefer to use a dedicated APS-C Sony camera and a dedicated Sony full frame camera. So to make a point here, this is Sony A7C full frame. This is Sony A6400 APS-C camera. And I had and sold Sony A7R 3 So my advice is that if you really want to use the cropping power, use a dedicated cropped sensor with a dedicated lens or a full frame lens on it, no problems. The difference for my real world use, it's totally, totally different than when you are using a camera with lots of megapixels and you are just pushing a button to crop. It's something else, especially in the use of the camera and especially in your mind, in your frame set when you are making pictures. So this is very important. Yes, on Sony A7R 3 probably you will get better image quality than even the APS-C sensor. I do agree with this. I've used the Sony A7R 3 and the results were crazy good in APS-C mode. The image was very sharp and it was looking great. But the joy of using a system that was changing from full frame to APS-C mode, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. So this is why I had big problems in deciding if I would buy this camera, Sony A6400, because I said, okay, I've used Sony APS-C on a full frame. It wasn't fun for me. Why I would need the Sony APS-C camera? Why I would do this? But I 
I felt in love with it. I felt in love with it. Why? Because it is smaller. It has great AF. The AF of Sony A6400, it's faster than on Sony A7C. Yes, in the real world, they are delivering the same results, but I feel this lens is faster and better with lots of third-party Sony lenses. So, again, totally, totally different experience. Totally, totally different experience. This experience can't be replaced by a crop factor. This is my idea. So don't rely and don't make a buying decision on the size of your sensor, hoping that you can crop in and you'll be satisfied. No, in general, I bet you'll not be satisfied if you have the experience of a dedicated crop camera. But where cropping is good? Well, I'm not saying cropping is not good. Cropping is good and it's a big helpful technique in photography. So cropping is good for macro photography, for moon photography, for uh, those shots and those subjects where you can't get closer for wildlife photography. So having a sensor with lots of megapixels, if you are doing a specialized kind of photography, cropping is for you. And uh, by the way, even the wildlife photographers are preferring to use APS-C cameras and micro four search cameras with their already cropped sensor. Why? Faster AF, better IBIS, dedicated lenses and so on. So cropping and buying a Leica Q3 or another camera, hoping that you can save your budget and not buy a dedicated lens, it's a wrong road. You'll and in buying the dedicated lens in the end, because after using the crop power, you'll see that, okay, cropping is not replacing the dedicated lens. So my end advice is invest in lenses. A lens, it will be way better, 10 times better than the cropping technique. Invest in lenses. And after that, if you have budget, also invest in a good sensor with lots of megapixels if you really are okay with the advantages and also the disadvantages. Have in mind those disadvantages. They are really there. And it's possible that you will be not satisfied with your big megapixel sensor camera. I wasn't satisfied with Sony A7R 3A at all. Even if that camera is greater and better than Sony A7C. But with Sony A7C, very, very satisfied. So have that in mind. Don't take a buying decision based on the crop power of the camera. Now, please check my links from the comments and description. And if you want to buy the gear that I'm using, please use my affiliate links. And after this, please check the next video. Click, click, click here right now.